how to speak, how to modulate your voice, up, down it goes, how much distance should be from the mic. Because you should realize that even Dawa, if you want to be a Dai, a full-time Dai, how you have full-time colleges teaching engineering, teaching medicine, teaching law, we should also have places where they teach professionally how to be Dai, not just, you know, on the way. So here, alhamdulillah, we train the people since we are experienced, not that we are great masters, we are experienced, we tell them from experience which way will be better. So they will teach how should you start a talk, what should be the starting of the talk, what should be the matter, what should be the end, how it should be, how to attract the people, how when somebody asks the question, how should you reply, what should be the first part, it should be the reason, logic and science, how to quote the scripture, how to quote the Quran, how to quote the Veda, how to quote the Bible. Here we train the people. And Alhamdulillah now, we have at least six or seven people who are Alhamdulillah, who can give very good lecture. Though I am in Chetna and Saudi Arabia, yet the program in IRF are continuing. We have, other, we have other people also. And Alhamdulillah, we have hundreds of people who are part-time dying in Bombay. Alhamdulillah, hundreds of people. So I believe, now Inshallah, we will be now building a new place in our office in Bombay, where at present we have a gentle swing and a lady swing. Now, very short, maybe within a month's time, we'll be starting a children's swing. Children's swing. Where we want to train our youngsters, our children, from the scratch. Not that when they grow elderly, at the age of 15 or 16, we start training them. From the beginning. Where if you hear my other lecture, you might have realized that how do we teach a child from childhood to come closer towards Islam? We have Islamic games. Instead of having monopoly, we have different games except to paradise, which I have explained, I think, in my last trip when I come to Chetta, out here, that in the monopoly, normally, they, which you may be knowing about monopoly and trade game, where they teach how to earn money. It's in pounds or dollars, or if it's a trade game in India, it's in rupees. You buy land and you sell land and they make you a good businessman. Here in the search to paradise, instead of dollars and pounds and rupees, you have sawab. 1,000 sawab, 2,000 sawab, 5,000 sawab. Instead of start, you have bismillah. And the aim of the person is to enter paradise, to enter jannah. And how will you come to a chance or community chest if you know Ponapali? If you have to pick up a card. You know when you pick up the card in the search to paradise, it says, that if you offer salah five times a day, you get a reward of five thousand salah. Next card you pick up, if you dance, you have to pay a fine of one thousand salah. So the child, any child, every child loves to win the game. So he wants to win the game, he starts offering salah five times a day. If you go to a dance party, he stops doing dance party. So there are several such games we have in a foundation. For example, the of Puzzle of the Haram, of the Haramin Sharif. We have other cards, Islamic cards. We have snakes and ladders, Islamic version, which I described in my other cassettes. So we want to train the child from the beginning. And we don't agree with the philosophy that a person should be dedicated completely either to secular education or completely only the alul. I do agree that there are called Alhamdulillah good alul. But we prefer a child doing both simultaneously. That if he wants to learn about Islam, simultaneously, along with secular education, which is equally important, he should also get religious education, which we have training programs with us. So if we have an opportunity to come to Bombay, I'm most welcome to visit our foundation. So that's the question. Thank you. Most welcome. Assalamu alaikum, Mr. Zahid. Wa alaikum assalam. I would like to thank you very much since you have enlightened us very much. My, I have got three questions. But my first question is. If you can ask uh, one question at a time, brother. Okay. If you can ask one question, give the other people a chance, then if, this, if all the other people finish, then you can ask them. Okay. If, uh, since you put it many. Yeah, I am more far I am a service engineer here. Uh, if Christians ask us that Jesus is more superior than our prophet, what would our answer to them so that we can communicate to them and do something? If not, if we have no answer to them, it will be. Well, the question. He referred to the, some of the sample questions which I posed during my talk. And how the Christian missionaries, they use as Muslims as the doormats, as punching bags. And he's asking that how can we reply to this question? We don't know the answer of all the questions, only one or two. Which is important? All of you, which one is the most important? Because I give several examples. Which answer do you want? 
In my own brother, I give few examples. One is the Bible of the Word of God. One is Jesus Christ, peace be upon him. He does not have a father. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and God. Jesus Christ gave life to the dead. Which one do you want? No father. The brother wants to know, and the reply, that I mentioned in my talk that Krishna is saying that no, no, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He had a father and a mother. Jesus peace be upon him, he had only a mother. He had no father. Indirectly saying, who's the father? God Almighty. Who's greater? Jesus peace be upon him. How to reply to such people? See, the answer to this question are given in the Holy Quran. You don't have to search it somewhere else. Most of the answers are given in the Holy Quran. The answer to this question, brother, is given in Surah Al Imran, chapter 3, verse number 59. We say, in the Masar Isa, in the Lai Kamasar Adam. Halakam in Surah, Summa Kala Kun Fayakun. Which means, the similitude of Jesus in front of Adam is same as the similitude of Jesus in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the same as Adam. He was created from dust and said, Be and it was. If you say that Jesus can peace be upon him, is God Almighty, is greater, because he had no father, then Adam peace be upon him will happen to be a bigger God. Because he had no father and no mother. And that's mentioned even in their scripture, the Bible. They say, no, 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 no. So if they say that Jesus can peace be upon him, is a bigger God because he had no father to tell him, then what about Adam peace be upon him? He had no father and no mother. He has to be a bigger God. They say, no. And besides that, there is one more superman in the Bible. If you read in the book of Hebrews, if you read chapter number 7, it says that King Melchizedek, the king of Salem, he had no father, he had no mother, he had no ascent, he had no descent, no beginning, no end. He is even bigger than Adam Peace before him in the Bible. So if you agree that a person who has no father is God Almighty, then King Salem, King of Salem, Melchizedek, he will be a bigger God. So there is a known. We have to ask for the Burhan. Kul Hatu Burhan Ko. In Kundum Sadiqin. Probably if you approve, if you trust Like that they keep on asking questions. For example, they ask. Now Jesus peace be upon him. He is mentioned in the Holy Quran 25 times by name. Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him only 5 times. Four as Muhammad, one as Ahmad. Peace be upon him. So who is greater? How do we reply? The answer is that the Holy Quran, it was revealed to Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him. If you are making any reference to any person who is present, I can refer him to he or the. For example, if I am talking about somebody present, I just have to say he or you or the. But if I have to refer to someone who is not present here, it becomes important that I have to take his name. So when the Quran was being revealed, Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, was not present. So whenever any example of Jesus, peace be upon him, had to be given, his name had to be taken. But since the Prophet was present, whenever any reference was made to the Prophet, directly he, how, O Nabi, O Prophet, and these references are hundreds in the Holy Quran. Since the Prophet was present when the Quran was revealed, his name had not to be taken always. And if you say only because the name is taken more times, in the Quran, Musa alayhi salam, Moses peace be upon him, he is mentioned by name one time to time. Do you mean to say greater than Jesus also? Peace be upon him? No, because Musa alayhi salam was not present and there were several examples of Bani Israel given about Musa alayhi salam, his name had to be taken. So we have to use the hikmah. Similarly, they say that your beloved Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, he did not give life to the dead. We agree. He did several miracles, but he did not give life to the dead. Jesus, peace be upon him, he gave life to the dead. So who's greater? I do agree. The Quran says that Jesus, peace be upon him, gave life to the dead. He said, Praise in Allah. Wake up in the name of Allah. Anyway. But whatever miracles, irrespective of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, did, or Jesus, peace be upon him, did, all did with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not without. So all the miracles which Jesus peace be upon him did, it mentioned the Quran, as well as in the Bible, testified the supremacy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not of Jesus peace be upon him. Because if you read in the Bible, Bible itself says in the Gospel of John, chapter number 14.